Hello everyone, welcome back to the CIA video series for this book. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at chapter 11, which was focused on password mining on Linux targets. And uh, the first thing you need to do is set up the target virtual machine that we actually listed out in this chapter, and that is available uh, on Dropbox. So you can actually use that link and you can download it directly. It's a Debian 6 virtual machine. Uh, and it's only 600 megabytes so you can download the OVA file directly from Dropbox and uh, once you have that downloaded uh, you then want to uh, you then want to head over to the actual directory where you saved it all right so I've opened up the directory where I actually saved mine and uh, all you need to do now is just double click on it or if you have more than one hypervisor installed uh, make sure you import it with VirtualBox so you want to click on VirtualBox manager it's going to bring up the VirtualBox import wizard, which you can again go through. The uh, the main thing I would recommend doing is changing the name to something more recognizable. You can also configure your CPU configuration and RAM configuration here, and also your machine base folder. This is where your VM will be stored, so you can change that to something that's uh, suitable or appropriate for you. And uh, that's pretty much it. Once you're ready to go, just hit import. In my case, I've already imported it. You can see it right over here. I've renamed it uh, Debian 6. And uh, what I've done is I've taken a snapshot so that I can always, always roll back or restore, uh, a, uh, or restore the virtual machine to its original state in the event I make any changes that are permanent or I damage anything. The next thing you want to do is go into your settings for the virtual machine and make sure it's attached to the NAT network uh, and more specifically the virtual hacking lab network that we set up. And once that is done, you should have the VM running as I do. And uh, I'll now switch over to my Kali VM and we can begin the password mining process on Linux. All right, so I'm back on my Kali VM and I've logged into the target. So we actually provided instructions as to how you can obtain an initial foothold on the target. And that is to log in via SSH using the credentials we provided. It will automatically log you in as an unprivileged user. Um, so again, you can see it's uh, simply user at Debian, right? And uh, now we'll get started with the first technique that I wanted to highlight, which was the process of extracting passwords from memory. Now I've already explored or explained this, uh, this particular technique, uh, but we're going to be using the GNU debugger to dump the memory of a running service or application in order to reveal any clear text or encrypted passwords that are being stored by that service in memory. All right, so if you're not familiar with GDB or the GNU debugger, uh, GDB is a portable debugger that runs on various Unix-like systems and can be used to, to debug various programming languages, binaries, so on and so forth. Um, so you can essentially use it to, to debug, uh, you know, any Unix applications. So, you know, if you're running Mac, uh, BSD or Linux for that matter, which in our case we are doing. Um, right, so... Again, this particular uh, technique we actually demonstrated was, uh, was, was fairly simple. We actually uh, dumped the memory from uh, the bash service. Now, of course, as I mentioned within this particular chapter, you can actually uh, dump the memory for, for other applications uh, or services that might store user credentials in memory. But in this case, we're going to be working with bash. All right, so the first thing we want to do on the target is list out the processes, the running processes. That can be done by typing in PSEF. And at the bottom here, you can see you have the bash service. There we are. Uh, it's actually quite uh, easy to spot. It's right at the end. So we have the bash service. And uh, again, we're going to be utilizing GDB to dump the memory of the bash service. And let's see what was actually, uh, what data is being stored in memory by the bash service. All right. So to do this, we can run the GDB command. So uh, GDB and we say the process and then the process ID. So the process ID is listed out here. So you can see when we ran the PS command, uh, the process ID is listed out here and uh, we are looking for 2414, right? So let's type that in 2414, we hit enter and uh, that's going to load up the bash service. And uh, now we can begin, uh, we can actually begin analyzing the, uh, the actual uh, contents that are being stored in memory by this service. So uh, the first thing we need to do is list all the mapped memory regions for this process. This can be done by typing in info proc, which uh, represents process and then mappings. We hit enter and this will list out the all the process, um, all the mapped memory regions for, for the actual process. Now, uh, if this uh, if this actually outputs uh, successfully, GDB should output the mapped address spaces for, for this particular service. 
and uh, we then need to take a note of the uh, heap. Uh, so if we can actually identify, there we are, we have the heap here. So we wanna take note of the start and end addresses of the heap, all right? So uh, we can dump the, uh, the, the service or the memory of this particular service by specifying the start and end address of the heap allocation. And uh, that can easily be done by again, typing in dump memory. So if we, uh, if we actually just hit Q here, and uh, we can then start we can actually say dump memory so we say dump um, dump memory dump memory and then we provide the output file so uh, again we can essentially just specify the name of the file and the actual uh, directory we want to store it under so i'm going to say desktop uh, and uh, or in this particular case let's just uh, save it as uh, we'll just call it dump you know just something that we can easily identify then we need to specify the start address of the heap which i'll specify there and uh, the end address of the heap here sorry um let me just copy that and paste that instead of the start address and uh, we then hit enter and that's going to dump the memory into that file um, right now, if you're not familiar with what a heap memory is, heap memory is essentially known as dynamic memory and is used to store applications, is used by applications to store global variables that can be utilized by the service uh, when and if needed. All right, so now that we're, we're done, we can essentially just exit. Um, so again, we'll just say quit. Sorry. Uh, yes, we want to quit. And uh, if we list the actual contents here, you can see we have the dump file that we actually created. Um, so what we can do is we can actually cat out the contents of the dump file, but we're looking for credentials, right? So we can use the strings utility. Uh, if you want to find out more about a particular utility on Linux, just type is uh, just type in what is, and then for example, I can say um, you know let's try strings. Let's see what that tells us. So you can see it tells us that the strings utility will print the strings of printable characters in a in files. All right, so we'll say strings, and then we say dump right and uh, we then we can then grab for what we're looking for in this case we can just say grab password we hit enter and look at that we have uh, an actual command that was typed in in bash and it looks like uh, the root user or uh, well it looks like one of the users who actually used bash uh, actually logged into the mysql server using the, the using the root user and the password as password one to three. So that's really not secure. But again, this virtual machine was set up to demonstrate uh, the techniques as opposed to uh, simulating a, uh, an, a complicated or complex environment to work in. So uh, we can actually try and log in here, but if I list out uh, all my services or if I use netstat here uh, and I say, you know, for example, uh, let me just type that in and we list out all the services, we can see um, that we don't have a MySQL server that's currently listening here. So we can actually try and use the, this these credentials to log into the root user. So we can actually confirm that we have a root user. Of course, on every Linux or Unix system, there will be a, a root user. But if it was another user, you can confirm the existence as a legitimate user on the system by uh, outputting the contents of the password file. In our case, you have the root user here. If it was another user, it will also it would also be added here. Right, so we can try and log in using the password that we were able to identify just to see if the uh, if the administrator or a particular user has been reusing passwords, which is very, very common by system administrators or by people who actually utilize uh, Linux servers and any other types of servers, uh, because it can be quite difficult to remember certain passwords. So that's always a good thing you should be testing for. So if we say switch user or su root, and we then provide password one to three we're immediately able to elevate our privileges to that of the root user and again i can confirm this by typing in id and i now have root privileges via ssh which is great and uh, again that's pretty much it so again you can actually see how useful this particular technique is now of course uh, we have already uh, been able to obtain admin privileges uh, but again, if there was a MySQL server on this uh, on this Linux system, we could actually log in and gain more access to other services that are utilizing the MySQL server. So that's always something that's uh, useful. All right. So the next technique that I wanted to cover is the process of actually searching for passwords in configuration files or in files that are stored locally on the target system. 
Now we have already taken a look at how to do this uh, when we were when we were essentially exploring the process of uh, you know searching for passwords on Windows uh, targets, and uh, the process and methodology essentially mirrors itself. Uh, to Linux systems. Uh, the only difference, of, of course, is the utilities that are being used and the way the Linux system is structured, the way co uh, applications and configurations are stored, so on and so forth. Right now, the reason, uh, again, we always do this is because a, t a target system could be set up for a multiple, uh, for multiple reasons or for a plethora of deployment use cases. And in the case of Linux systems, you'll typically run across Linux systems that are being used to host uh, services like a web server, a database, uh, a few other applications, so on and so forth, right? And all of these applications store or utilize configuration files to determine or to actually configure or to set up the environment that they will actually be running uh, in. Right, so uh, configuration files can be used to de to define, for example, uh, you know, username and password uh, credentials that these uh, particular applications will use, uh, username and password uh, credentials for other services that this particular application or service will actually connect to, so on and so forth. Right. Secondly. Um, users and system administrators may also store passwords locally so they may you know store them in custom configuration files in backup scripts so on and so forth so that's what we're trying to identify here now uh, again on linux the uh, we can easily do this using the grep utility and i can just paste in the command here all right so what this command is doing is we're using the grep utility to search for files uh that actually we're actually searching for files in the root of the linux file system so we're essentially searching all files and directories on the linux file system for any occurrence of the string or the word password right and uh, if we hit enter you'll actually see that it'll display quite a lot of data and now this data is very very useful but the problem as you can tell is it's very difficult to decipher uh, or to actually identify what you're looking for, right? Um, so going into this process, you need to have an understanding of what you're looking for exactly. Number one, have you been able to identify any application or service uh, that you want to find credentials for? Secondly, uh, are you looking for a specific, uh, a, are you looking or searching for a file that contains passwords uh, for a specific user? Uh, is it uh, is it uh, again part of the web server uh, the web server stack that's being used? Is it uh, are these database credentials so on and so forth? So if you have an understanding of that going in, then you can better customize your search. As you can see, because we're searching, uh, you know, for every file on the Linux file system or uh, you know from the root of the Linux file system that contains the word password it's going to display a lot of matches now as I said this particular command will actually highlight the word password for you uh, and what we're trying to uh, identify or to find here is any file that stores passwords that we can use and typically configuration files or files like these will store passwords in both the username and password uh, pair or configuration so that's why we're using the word password now, uh, as I said, it's recommended to always switch this uh, because some applications or services will store passwords or the password variable or value uh, as either password, the word password or pass W, right? So if we hit enter, in this case, you can see it's going to take, uh, it's not going to display anything right from the beginning. And the reason it's doing that is primarily because uh, they, it's not actually finding any matches. And that's a good thing because it'll only list out files that contain this particular string right now as i said you can customize that to whatever you want um, and as i said most applications will typically store them in the form of these two strings however there are occurrences of them using other formats uh, if you're looking for usernames or you're trying to enumerate usernames uh, from from configuration files you can also say user and we hit enter and again it does the same thing but this will be much harder to actually sift through as i said it's going through the entire uh you know the entire file system from the root directory not from the root user but from the root of the linux file system now what can we do to counter this because as i said we are primarily interested in files that have something useful or will actually be storing credentials now when we talk about applications or services on Linux, uh, they store configuration files in the Etsy directory, right? Which is very useful because we can actually limit our search to the Etsy directory. So for example, if I just paste in the command here, 
you'll see that it will actually it's essentially the same command but now it's only going to search for files within the etsy directory that match the string password or that have occurrences of the string password within their content right so if we hit enter um, let's see you can see it now uh, reduces or the amount of res results reduce and we can see quite a few configuration files uh, that give us an idea number one of how they work or how the passwords are encrypted uh, number two it, you know for example uh, the xm4 configuration template actually shows us what the uh, the actual authentication form looks like but none of this is really useful because we haven't been able to identify any passwords yet we're simply just finding occurrences of the string password uh, but nothing concrete in terms of actual credentials that we can use to elevate our privileges All right so let us actually uh, you know limit this or you know try and search in user directories now because the etsy folder hasn't revealed anything so uh, we can start off with the our current user directory which is simply the user user as you can see here and uh, we can't search the root directory because we're unprivileged so if i just paste that in again it's limiting it now to the user direct the user home directory and we're searching for occurrences of the word pass so you can interchange that with pass pass w or password itself if we hit enter we can see some very interesting results we can see that under the home user my uh, the home uh, the user's home directory we're able to identify a my vpn open uh, my uh, or an open vpn configuration file uh for the for this particular user and it's stored under etsy openvpn uh, auth.txt so we can actually cat the content of this particular file so we can copy the actual uh, uh path to that file so we say cat and then we paste that in and we hit enter and it simply tells us that the open vpn configuration for the user user is username is user and the password is three to one we already know that because we were able to authenticate to this account so that's really not telling us anything useful there so we haven't been able to identify any other credentials that, that can of course extend or expand our scope uh of con or of control or you know uh, over the this this particular system or over the network so um, we can also utilize the find utility, which is again, uh, much better to actually fine tune your search in terms of the output or the results that will be output. So if I can paste the command that we used within this chapter, you can see we are searching for files in the Etsy directory. Uh, the type of files we're looking for are just files. And then we're looking for the occurrences of the word pass and we can then hit enter. And in this case, it doesn't match anything, uh, but uh, again, we we pretty much will get the same uh, type of results as if we had used the grep utility although you can see that we can actually try and read the files of the ssh configuration which can again give us an idea of how the ssh services is, is configured and uh, and where certain public uh, uh you know public keys are being stored but again it's the same thing um the same thing is is repeated here we aren't able to find any useful credentials again we can repeat the same thing uh, uh you know you we can actually search the user's home directory using the find command um so again if i just uh use the find command here and again we're looking for the same results um let's see whether that displayed anything here you can see it actually does display something it displays uh right if i can actually find where i typed in the command here because it's not actually listing that out uh but uh let me just clear my screen and do that again you can see that um, under the actual home directory under the bash history file we're able to identify the mysql command that was used to authenticate to the mysql server and again we know that the root uh, credentials for the mysql server uh, are also the same for the root user so we can actually or you know elevate our privileges that way so let's actually try and do that again we've already done this but again we need to confirm that this does work uh, so we hit enter and we have elevated our privileges successfully. Um, so that is how to essentially, uh, you know, search for passwords in configuration files manually using utilities. Uh, we can also utilize the linpeas script to actually uh, identify any passwords or credentials. Um, so what I'll do is let me head over and I'll switch back to the user account. And uh, we will head over into the uh, temp directory, which is just TMP on Linux. 
and I'll set up a web server on my Kali VM to host the LinP script, which I have downloaded already on my desktop. And if I head over to Linux Enum, and you can see I have LinPs here. So we'll use the Python module simple HTTP server. And we'll run this on port 80, right? And I'll just provide my password here. And that's going to host it. And with, then we can use the wget utility. So we say HTTP 10, 10, 10, 5. This is the IP of my Kali VM. And then I say linpeas.sh, hit enter. And that'll get the file for us. And then I can close this up here. And uh, we can then say, uh, let's give it executable permissions. So we say chmod plus ax linpeas. And then we can execute it here, right? So linpeas.sh. So we're just going to enumerate uh, all the information here, but we'll, we'll, we'll actually be able to go through it step by step. So I'm just going to let this complete and uh, I'm just going to let this uh, complete outputting all the results. And let's see whether we're able to identify any other credentials uh, that are actually being stored locally, either in the form of a configuration file or uh, in the form of a file that uh, it was actually stored locally by a, uh, an administrator or user on the system. So again, uh, just give that a few seconds. All right, so LinPs has actually completed the enumeration. And as you can see here, it pretty much displays what we've been able to find manually. And it tells us over there, we, we actually get the OpenVPN configuration file, which we already know contains the credentials for the unprivileged user account, which is fine. Um, if we scroll uh, right over here to the bottom, which is where it actually begins searching for passwords, there we are. It'll actually start analyzing the configuration files of, uh, you know, uh, various applications or services. And in this case, we have the IRC config, which, uh, of course, in this case is simply just called IRC. IRC is a very popular IRC client on Linux. And uh, we can see that we have the uh, we have the uh, un un unprivileged user accounts password uh, that they actually use to log in to IRC. And of course, we don't get much out of that. We don't get the root user here again. So that uh, really doesn't give us much there. Um, so if we scroll again to the bottom uh, right over here, we can find a few PGP signatures. Um, and uh, if we scroll, uh, let me just bring this to the bottom where we'd actually begin searching for passwords actively. Um, we should actually see the results here now. Uh, right, so there we it starts searching for passwords inside logs, which again, we aren't able to identify anything here, uh, which is also another useful place to actually check for passwords. Uh, we also get a few emails, which are in this case primarily look like are uh, they're actually related to a few repositories. And uh, it also checks for passwords in the home directory, which in this case, uh, again, we aren't uh, able to identify anything useful there. It also looks for passwords inside key folders. So no PHP files. Again, the same thing, uh, you know, we, we actually get the, the same results here. Now, of course, given the fact that LinPs did not identify any credentials, doesn't mean that it's not a useful tool. As I said, we haven't just found, uh, we, we just haven't found any credentials for this particular target system. It is a extremely useful tool for enumeration and I do recommend running it. And of course, doing that in conjunction with manual techniques. All right, so these are the techniques that I pretty much wanted to highlight at the moment uh, as they're the most important. And we've pretty much been able to elevate our privileges, uh, you know, both by using manual techniques and of course, automatically using the LinP script. So I'll be seeing you in the next chapter.